2.3 converting between fractions and decimals. We're going to go both ways. All right, so we're in this section, section 2.3 in your books. Um, you will need your books for example 3. We're not there yet, but we will open them up when we get to example 3. All right, so terms, um, you don't have to write this down. Do we all know that a terminating decimal ends? <laughs> yeah, of course. A terminating decimal ends. It has an end point. And then a repeating decimal has a pattern that repeats. So we know that, all right? We just kind of need to state the obvious on what they are, what's a terminating decimal and what's a repeating decimal. So let's look at these three examples. 1.4, 1 1.4. 1 uh, there is no indication that it's a repeating decimal. Why? What do we look for? What's on number two that's different than number one? What do we see here, Kennedy? The line over the number. The line over the number. Does anybody remember the fancy term for that? We call it, yeah, it's the line over the number, but we call it, no, bar notation. Bar notation. So, you know, it looks like a bar. So, it's bar notation. That's what it's called. Um, okay, so, I'm just going to simply identify. This is a terminating decimal. Don't you want me to put this on your quiz? <laughs> terminating. Just simply identifying. Repeating. What about the third one? The third one looks a little different. Why? It's more than one number repeating, so does that mean that only the 3 keeps going? No. No, the 5 and the 3 in that order. 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, 3. And it's still, yes, a repeating decimal. All right? Repeating decimal. All right, example 1. Writing fractions and mixed numbers as decimals. You might even want to write this on your notes. Always write the mixed numbers as improper fractions. We're always changing to improper. So negative 2 and 1 fourth. If this is a homework problem, you can write it as an improper fraction on your paper, okay? Just as your original problem. That would be fine. All right, so negative 2 and 1 fourth as an improper fraction is what? Yes, it is negative 9 over 4. And your numerator always, 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 I know it looks a little funny, goes on the inside of the division, and your denominator always goes on the outside. I'm going to drop this down just a little bit. No matter what the size of the numbers are. So this one looks right because it is going to have a whole number in the ones place, obviously because it's a mixed number. But most of the time, fractions are less than one, right? That's the definition of a fraction. It's not quite a whole. So most of the time, the smaller number goes on the inside. So don't be thrown off by that. All right? Um, so let's start our long division. All right, so 4 goes into 9 how many times? 2. Very good. And 2 times 4 is 8. So do I add 9 plus 8? No. no, we subtract it. Okay, 9 minus 8 is 1. But because I have 1 left over and it's not, an, um, it's not a 0, I have to add a decimal point and bring it straight up into your answer and a zero okay bring that zero down four goes into ten two times eight again two bring down one more zero and it's gonna be a five okay now that I've divided I cannot forget what in my answer the negative Okay, so the negative is not a part of the division. I just bring it over at the end. And now I've converted a fraction, or in this case a mixed number, into a decimal. All right, negative 2.25. Okay, next one. 5 over 11 is already a fraction. Awesome. Okay, now again, I'm going to repeat what I just said. The numerator always goes on the inside, even if it looks a little funny. Okay, you think, oh, I thought my big number went on the inside. Well, not always, okay? So I'm dividing the numerator by denominator. Yeah, I said that right. Okay, does 11 go into 5? No. No, and that makes sense because 5 elevenths is not a whole, so there's not going to be anything in the, in the ones place. All right, so now I'm going to add a 0. Does 11 go into 50? Yes. Yeah, how many times? Four times. Four times, so I have 44. 
And now I'm just going to keep subtracting down the line. Doesn't go into 6, so I bring down another 0. 11 into 60? 5 times. 5 times? 55? Okay, so now it's another 5. Bring down my 0. Now here's my first hint that this could be repeating, but I need to go one more to be sure because of the 5. I need to see if this next number is a 5. I know it's a repeating decimal. All right, so 44. Right, yeah, 44, and then 6, and then bring down my last 0, and then, yes, it is a 5, so it's 4, 5 repeating. All right, so I would definitely say that the repeating, is this positive or negative? All right, so the repeating ones are definitely the most tedious because I have to go out four decimal places to confirm. All right, and once I get to my fourth, um, I can tell whether it's repeating or, um, or not. All right, example two. In example two, I'm going the other way and writing a decimal as a fraction, okay? So here, I need to look specifically at the last decimal place in the number. Whatever place value it holds will be the number in my denominator. So I know, according to place value, the six is in what place? Think about it. The six is in one place. The hundredths place, okay? Tenths comes first, then the hundredths. All right, it's never going to give you anything past four decimal places. All right, that's just a little excessive. What did you think, you know, to have a hundred thousand in your denominator? That would be ridiculous. Okay, so six is the hundredths place. So 100 goes in your denominator, okay? And then the decimal value goes in your numerator, don't forget your negative. And now you want to reduce, and you want to reduce by the largest number that goes into both of them. We call that the GCF, the greatest common factor. All right? If you're having trouble, just start basic. Because in this case, what's the only number that goes into both of them? Two. Two. Four doesn't. Four doesn't go into 26. Okay? 26 is my wild card. So because of that, it's just negative 13 over 50. And sadly, you have to reduce all the way to get any credit at all on these problems, okay? So it has to be completely reduced. Negative 10 and 25 hundredths. How do you think this is going to be written? Don't say it out loud. Maybe just think about it or even write it on your paper. How do you think this one is going to be written as a fraction? How will this be written as a fraction? Just think about it for a sec. Okay, what do you notice that's different about the second one? It's, a whole number. it's got a whole number in front of it. How do I write a whole number in a fraction? Mixed. As a mixed number. So it would be negative 10. And now for the decimal portion, I need to figure out what is the last decimal place in this decimal value. What's the last place? Hundreds. It is the hundredths place. So again, 100 goes in the denominator and 25 and the numerator. Can I reduce that by anything? Yes. Yeah, I can. Four. Negative 10. 25. 25. 25. Yeah, but yeah, I get what you're thinking, though. Yes, you're reducing by 25, and it's going to be 1 fourth. Okay, and now I've changed a decimal to a fraction. And that's, that's pretty much it, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring these concepts together in a real life example, I guess as real life as it comes, there are sea creatures. <laughs> All right, so we're in example three on page 64. Go ahead and turn to example three on page 64. Okay, so the table shows, do you see the table on the left-hand side, upper left? Uh, the creature, <laughs> I think that's an interesting, we could just say a fish, but I guess they're not all f considered fish. So sea creatures, okay, four sea creatures relative to sea level. What's sea level? What is sea level? The breaking point, right? So um, as soon as you're out of the water, you're above sea level. So anything below sea level is obviously under water, all right? So that's why they're all negative. Um, so here's what it's asking. Which of the sea creatures are deeper in the ocean than the whale? Well, go figure. The whale is the only one that's a decimal. Of course. Okay. So do you want to convert them all to fractions and find your LCD between 10, 11, and 5? Oh, yes. 
no. If you don't want to find your LCD, then you have to change all your numerators, and it's a big hassle. You could, but that is definitely not the ideal way of comparing. We want to compare in decimal form, and that goes across the board. Comparing in decimal form is just easier than comparing in fraction form. So I am going to convert each one of these fractions to a decimal. 13 divided by 10, we know that they're all negative, okay? So, um, but that's not involved in the division. 2 divided by 11. And 11 divided by 5, because we have to change that to a mixed number. Okay, um, and let's go ahead and practice our long division. So I'm going to walk around and just kind of check your papers uh, while you're doing your long division, changing each one of these. And I do want you to label, okay, so which one is 13 over 10? This is the angler fish. All right, so the first one's the angler, so we know which one's which. Uh, the second one we're converting is the shark. The third one we're converting is the squid. And we're comparing all of these to the whale. All right, so 10 goes into 13 one time. 30. Um, no. Yeah, 3. 1.3. All right, so that kind of bleeds over the text, but that's okay. So we have 1.3, and then just tell me this one. I know this one's the repeating decimal. Zero point, what was it? 1818. Y'all didn't cheat and look in your books first, did you? No. Did you actually do it? <laughs> okay, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's right there in your book. <laughs> okay, it was in there the whole time. All right, so yes. All right, guys, quiet. We've got to get through this, okay? Now, 5 goes into 11. 5 goes into 11 how many times? What's the decimal? 2.2. 2. Okay, so you did the work, all right? Um, and those are my decimal values. So now, the whale, remember, the whale was a negative 0 0.8, okay? So we're looking specifically at the tenths place, the tenths place. Are there any um, depths that are closer to sea level than negative 0 0.8? No. For the anglerfish, the shark, or the squid? One of those is definitely closer to the surface. Oh, yeah. shark. The shark, very good, because there's a one in the tenths place. And we know that, right? Because you can always see sharks from the helicopter aerials. You can see sharks swimming around the swimmers at the beach. Anybody ever seen those videos? where there's like swimmers in the ocean and the sharks are swimming all in between them. So yeah, sharks swim very close to the surface. They can dive, but they like swimming close to the surface. So sharks are out, all right? They are not deeper than the whale. What two fish are deeper? The angler fish, that's negative 1.3. That's definitely deeper and negative 2.2. All right, they're all negative. They're all underwater. And those numbers definitely are are less than or deeper than the whale. So my answer to answer the question is anglerfish and squid, okay? And my work is proof that I'm not just guessing like any, meeny, money mo. this one, <laughs> okay? My work is proof that I actually know for sure that these are the two sea creatures that swim deeper than the whale. All right, that should be everything you need to know for section 2.3.